And joining us today in our Book Talk segment, great to welcome one of the uh, authors of a very interesting and inspirational book. It's called Small Miracles from Beyond, Dreams, Visions, and Signs that uh, Link Us to the Other Side. We're joined today by uh, Yetta Alberstam on the telephone. And uh, Yetta, thanks for joining us today. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, Doug. Yeah, good to have a chance. I, I, when I got the notice that uh, this book was uh, going to be available and to talk to you, I wanted to have you on because I think this uh, touches... Uh, Something we've all gone through, maybe maybe not exactly the story in the book, but something similar of maybe getting some messages that uh, that are a little bit uh, you don't understand, but but from from the beyond, it, it touches the nerve, I think, with most people. I, I agree with you. I think that um, well, not that I think, but I know I've read many surveys that have said that at least fifty percent of all Americans have had these kind of experiences, but are sometimes a little shy about sharing them because they think that other people might possibly mock them or scoff at them but that actually a lot of people have had some kind of what we call ADC, after-death communication with a deceased loved one, or some kind of received some kind of sign, or perhaps had a dream in which a deceased relative appeared with instructions or comfort or guidance. And, you know, we've come to collect the stories of 50 very reputable people who have had these stories and share them and give us all comfort that, you know, life is not of the punctuation. Death is not punctuated by... <laughs> Let me say that again. <laughs> death is not the punctuation mark, but there is something beyond death. There is a different dimension, and consciousness really survives death. Yeah, I, I, I myself have had this uh, happen my, when my grandmother uh, uh, passed away, and, and then... Not long after that, uh, I don't know, but you've, some people tell you this too when you're in bed and you, you feel like there's somebody sitting on the bed and you sort of wake up and, and they're there. You don't really see them, yeah. but you, you feel that. Uh, have you had other people tell you that? Yes, many, many people have yeah. told similar stories. Absolutely. Do we know what that is? Well, I mean, people really believe that the, that the soul does not die. Yeah. That there are, and, and there are, our relatives are somewhere on a spiritual plane watching over us. And from time to time, you know, when the, the opportunity comes or when there's some kind of danger or risk to their loved ones, they will descend to our mortal realms and help us out. And, you know, that's what the stories in Small Miracles from Beyond are all about. They're about ABC, after-death communication, where loved, deceased loved ones will communicate with their loved ones in dreams or via signs, um, or also stories of reincarnation, apparitions, coincidences that seem to be guided by a supernatural hand, and the power of prayer and saving people, um, mysterious phone calls and text messages that we cannot explain that seem to come from a different plane. So yeah, lots of people have experienced them, and they're very comforting because we do want to believe that in some form, our relatives, our loved ones, are still around us and are still watching over us and are with us in some way. Yeah, I had a similar thing. Uh, my dad passed away about five, six years ago, and, and uh, that happened not long after he passed away, but then occasionally you'll have a dream of where he's talking to you. So, yeah, that, that, that is, that, so that's, that's relatively common then. Has he ever given you any specific advice or guidance or instructions? Uh, not specific, but we, we like had a conversation. Yeah, that happened not too long ago, and it happens every once in a while. So I, I, I just, I, I've heard of dreams like that, but I've just thought it was kind of interesting that sometimes you feel a presence where maybe they're sitting next to you or on a bed or something when you're asleep. So I don't know if that's a dream <laughs> there or not, or if you're awake. You never can quite tell if you're awake or not when that happens, but, but it feels like you're awake. Well, you know, that, that has happened, what you're describing is a very common experience. Um, some of the stories in Small Miracles from Beyond are actually um, go a little beyond that. Like, for example, we have a story of a woman who was um, in a concentration camp, and her mother came to her in a right. dream yeah, and story. told her that she, would that she would survive this rebellion at the camp called Sobibar, and she told her exactly where to go when she would be out in the woods, she took her in the dream by hand, and they flew over the, you know, they flew over the concentration camp, and they, they landed in a barn, 
And the mother said, go up to the, the hayloft and stay there, and that's where you're going to survive until the end of the war. And the woman followed her mother's instructions precisely to the T, and she did find the barn. It belonged to a uh, Gentile friend of her father's from before the war. It took her five days to walk there. And when she got there, her brother, who she thought had died already and during the Holocaust, there he was in the same barn. Mm, yeah. Now, that's not something you can make up. I mean, you can say wish fulfillment, you can say your unconscious is tapping into something, but these were specific instructions, and she followed them, and her life was saved. You know, what can you say to that? And, and it has happened to so many people that it would be hard to believe that, uh, that there's nothing to it. You know, there's one or two exactly. people you might say, okay, they, they dreamt that, but you say hundreds have you gotten, and I'm sure it's thousands of millions of people have had something similar happen to them. Sure, there are tons of books out right now that are topping the New York Times bestseller list about near-death experiences. Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, who was the first person to really bring the topic of near-death experiences to the public consciousness, had investigated tens of thousands of cases. Dr. Ian Stevenson um, investigated 20,000 cases of children who claimed past lives remembrances. You know, so there's, you cannot, these have actually been documented by psychiatrists, scientists, people with very valid credentials. And, you know, it's not, it's not heebie-jeebie anymore. It's becoming right. documented. And you had, in the book, you have some stories that, uh, that happened to you, right, or, or at least been told to you, but that happened to you personally as well? Yes, absolutely. Um, one of the stories is um, about a phone call from heaven. Yeah. <laughs> or I'm not sure, but I would hope so. The story is that my mother was a believer, and uh, we were sure that she was going to come to us after she passed. And my brother and sister and I would call each other every now and then and kind of, kind of kid each other and say, so have you heard from Mommy yet? And no, we didn't, and we were very disappointed because she was the type who would be able to wend her way back to this world and give us a sign, the positive one in our laps, and she didn't. So one day, about eight years after she died, I kind of just spoke out loud humorously and, and said, Ma, come on, it's time. I want to see a sign from you. Come on. And um, nothing happened, no bolts of lightning, no flare of fireworks. But that night, at about 12 o'clock at night, the phone rang. And I picked it up, and I just heard static. And I figured, okay, maybe it's a phone call from abroad. Maybe it's the wrong number. Maybe it's an emergency. If it's an emergency or, a, you know, someone will call me back right away. But no one called me back. So I looked at the caller ID. And I was stunned because the numbers on the caller ID said 000-000-000. And I, I had never received a caller ID like that. Have you? Never have. No, it's strange. So I got very excited, right, because I'm mystically inclined. My husband comes home, and I tell him. And he's rolling his eyes because he's a diehard skeptic. And he says, so tell me, do you think they use Vonage, Sprint, Verizon? What service do you think they use from heaven? I said, but, but why does it say zero, zero, zero? He said, oh, come on. It's just a mistake. It's a malfunction. It's a telemarketer. I said, a telemarketer at 12 o'clock at night? But he convinced me that I was being crazy, right? Okay, I forgot the incident. And then several months ago, I started researching stories for small miracles from beyond. And one of the places I went to was a website that contained people's true stories of their own personal experiences. And I nearly fainted because one woman related a story that was basically an exact echo of mine. Mm. She said, my mother passed on. I asked her for a sign. One day, the phone rings. I pick it up. I hear strange static crackling over the lines. I shout, hello, hello. No one answers. And then I hang up. I look at the caller ID, and it says, Zero 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 zero, and I was convinced the woman writes that my mother was calling from, as the zeros indicated, 
nowhere. Yeah. And after I read this woman's story, I decided, look, I could ideally call the telephone company and be passed around from one person to another and ask them, what does this mean? What, what does zero, zero, zero mean? And maybe someone would give me a logical explanation. But you know what? I would like to believe that somehow my mother contacted me. <laughs> and even if our communication in life wasn't so great, after death, it was perfect. You got a good one. <laughs> that is a great story. I, I enjoyed the, reading that one. Thank you. <laughs> I, I know we have limited time today, uh, and hopefully we can talk again sometime, but I want to give out the title again, Small Miracles from Beyond, Dreams, Visions, and Signs that Link Us to the Other Side. And we've been talking with Ayeda Halberstam today. And Ayeda, you have a, a specific website you want to give out? People can get a hold of the book or get a hold of you? Well, I, I do want to tell uh, people who love bargains that right now Amazon.com is offering one-third off the uh, retail price, but if they can't get to Amazon for some reason, the book will be available or is already available at all Barnes & Noble stores, <clears throat> excuse me, at all independent stores and really any store that sells interesting and fine book. <laughs> Great. Well, yet appreciate you taking the time today, and uh, hopefully we can uh, talk again down the road, but uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Doug. I very much appreciate your, your having me on the show. Thank you so much. Have a good week.